This is Twit. Today is all about 3D printers. Yes. Now, this is yours. You want to explain some of the issues we've been having? Uh, yeah, I got this based on your recommendation know, from I Know How. Know. And I printed a bunch of uh, things on it that came out really cool. And then it just stopped sticking to the bed. I tried the dif different filament, different temperatures, and no matter what I did, it would just create spaghetti down here. Right. Now, we all are familiar with the spaghetti. If you've owned a 3D printer, you know what that looks like. It's basically you have a normal print until it stops adhering, and then it just becomes like a Furby or a Tribble worth of yeah, filament. Yeah, it's just dragging the filament all over and makes a big ball of mess. Yeah, and the worst so. part about that is if you have multiple objects being built, the fur ball gets dragged into the objects that haven't been yeah. destroyed yet. It just wipes out everything on the plate, which is a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. So what we want to do is we want to take a look at some of the causes for that. Now, the first thing that I, I looked at, and this is actually true of the Plus. Because remember, I did not suggest the Plus. I suggested the version 2. You upgraded to the Plus. Well, has it integrated screen and it everything? It does. It does. But it also is a bit more complicated. I actually bought a Plus over the summer, and I had to send it back after driving it really, really hard. I mean, the thing was printing 24-7 for like a month. But the uh, the temperature gauges actually failed. And so what was happening is the bed would overheat and then underheat, then overheat, then underheat. That would definitely cause the problem because what happens is uh, the reason why we have the heated bed is you want to keep the filament more or less at a constant temperature. Otherwise, parts of it will contract and other parts will expand and it pops itself off the bed and you get spaghetti. Yeah. The heated bed should theoretically keep at least that first layer, the the, the first layer that adheres to the plate at the same temperature so it stays nice and straight and solid on the platform. If that gets too hot, it melts the filament and it will rub off. And mm -hmm. if it's too cold, again, you get the temperature variances and it pops off. Right. But let's, let's look at some of the things that you might be experiencing. The first thing that has to happen and the first thing that you should think of when you have something that's not adhering is bed leveling. Now, Patrick, this is, this is a nice printer. This actually is nicer than the two in the sense that it does have auto, well not auto leveling, but it does have a leveling routine built into the menu that theoretically should allow you to be able to, to level the bed without having to worry about things like, uh, oh, am I, am I off on this corner or off on that corner? Right, yeah. And uh, I, I've tried leveling this so many times. And no go. No, so I, I don't think it's a leveling issue. Yeah. But I did write to Monoprice and ah. ask them about the issue. And what did they say? They said, have you tried tape? Yeah. How about some hairspray? Yeah, I, I have used hairspray and I have used tape, yeah. but the thing is, if it's a brand new printer, and it, if it is the plus, it should adhere to the bed. So let's see if we can make yeah. that happen. The first thing we're going to do is, before we start leveling the bed, we need to level the print head. This is something that people overlook, especially on the uh, the i3 clones, and that is if the if this bar here, where the, uh, the hot end goes back and forth, if that's not level, nothing else will level properly. Because what you'll get is you'll get basically the plate being skewed. Have you noticed that at some points, like, that you can't get the spring out enough and some other points you can't get the spring down enough? No, I haven't. All right, well, let's see what this looks like. If you go to my cast, this is a little level. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this phone on the crossbeam. And what we want is we want all, see that the, the one at the top, we want it to become red to say that it's level. Now, if you come back out to the, uh, the outside camera, uh, what I'm going to do is there's actually an adjustment point here that allows me to, uh, to move this up or down. Uh, go to the cast, Alex, and I'm going to go ahead and adjust this. There we oh. go. Right about there. So it was about a degree off. Okay. okay. Yeah. And that's important because if the head is moving at an angle, there's almost no angle that we can put the bed at that's going to be good for that filament. It's going to be skewed. Right. Now we're going to go ahead and do the, the leveling routine. And this, this is not as simple as it sounds because you actually need to do this routine multiple times. Mm. A mistake that a lot of people make when they have a printer like this is they run it once, they do all the leveling, they follow the instructions, and they think, oh, that's good. The problem is on a bed like this, as you move the screws to level one corner, it's by necessity going to unlevel another corner. So you have to yeah. keep doing it until you don't really adjust anything anymore. So let's go ahead and activate the leveling routine. We're going to go to tools, we're going to go to level, and I've got a leveling card. Now this is something I got off of my Dremel, but anything that's about 0.3 millimeters is just about perfect. What we want is we want there to be just enough clearance for 
the head to touch the card but not really hold it. Yeah, I've used a piece of standard printer paper. That'll so. work too. It's that's a little bit thin. Okay. And in, in that particular case, then you need to make sure that it's not touching it at all. Like you can't okay. feel it. This is 0.3 millimeters is just about right where I can have a tiny bit of friction and it's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and move it to the next position. And what's going to happen is it's going to go on to a corner. And it, notice how it's coming in from the outside corner. It wants to be closer to the center because that's where most of the prints are going to take place. So in this case, uh, I, I worked on this a little bit before the show. It's just about right. I'm going to give it a bit more tension just to see if I can get it down it's there. It's a lot more tension. Oh, well. Wow. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Wow, this, uh, this bed is way, way off. I've actually run out of room on the bed. So what's happened now is that that screw is, at, that oh, is all, the way, all the way loosened way and it's still not touching. Yeah. That's a problem. So let's go and check the other side. We'll keep coming back. I sh I've actually got a solution for that. This has been a problem with the, the, the plus version. I've noticed this on two separate printers where the, the carriage underneath is actually bent a little bit. And you oh. have to fix that. Either you have to send the whole thing back or I've, I've got a different kind of fix. So let's go ahead and do this one. The other fix a hammer? <laughs> or a, pl a pair of pliers. There we go. Okay, so now I'm starting to feel a little bit of tension. And that's, there we go. So it's, yeah. now it's grabbing. So I'm gonna pull it back. That's okay. about there. So that one's perfect. Let's go to the next one. Same thing. There we go, and let's go and loosen up the screw until we get a little bit of tension. I noticed there are burn holes in your card. There are. Uh, sometimes I do this when the head is hot because I get upset <laughs> and I just want to get it done. Okay, right about there. Okay, so that's good. And go to the next one. All right. And if you want to go ahead and handle this one. Yeah, so just loosen that screw until you start to feel it's it already grab. loose. No, no, no. You're almost there. There we go. And yeah, and I know this is tedious, folks, and I understand that this is a is a pain in the butt, but if you don't level properly, no print will ever come out right. Even if it does adhere, it's gonna be skewed and it's just not gonna look right. Is that about right? I think that's about right. Yeah, yeah. And so let's go to the next one. See, now that was one complete level, but let's go ahead and do it again and see if any of those adjustments change this first one, because some of these we're, there was a huge change, well, and we're going to need to be able to. There you go. We're going to need to be able to readjust the corners that we just adjusted, and you have to keep doing this over and over and over again until finally you you can get within like one or two turns of saying, "Yeah, we're we're good." Now this was this corner didn't want to touch at all. I'm betting it's going to want to touch a little bit now because we've adjusted the other side. So, Yep. Yep. Oh, See? It's stuck. Remember how in the, the first pass, it wouldn't touch it at all. Yeah. And that's because the other screws were retracted all the way. So go ahead and adjust this one. So you're going to want to tighten it. Oh, other away. way. Yeah. Uh, remember, on the front screws, if you go this way, it's going gonna, it's gonna to tighten. Oh. And on the other screws, you go that way. About right? Uh, right about there, I guess. Okay. So we go to the next one. Touching but loose. Yeah. I typically do three or four passes yeah. uh, that are coarse. And then I'll do another pass that's really, really fine. And my, my criteria there is I can't turn, if I turn the screw one complete turn, I got to do another one. See, uh, look at, see, it's not even going under. Oh, yeah. So, and anytime I'm doing this, like that's 12 turns there. Anytime I'm doing that much turning, I have put the other corners out of, mm -hmm. out of alignment. Yeah. Next. But theoretically, every time you go around, you should do, be doing less and less turning. Correct. And if you're doing more and more turning, then that's when you have to start thinking, I think my bed is bent. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but same, same thing. This won't even go under the head anymore because we turned it so much just to get it contact. Okay. Well, there we go. So we're going to get a little bit of friction, but not a whole lot. Okay. And then the next one. You want to do this one? Sure. Now, one of the other things that I try to do when I'm when I'm uh, doing this is I watch the motion of my steppers and make sure that they're smooth. 
There are a couple of units that are i3 clones where the steppers are actually either moving excessively or you'll see them shudder, you'll see them jitter. If they're shuddering and they're jittering, what's happening is it just means you've got a really low end uh, device and it's not aligned properly and it might actually be skipping a thread or two. And if it skips anything, that's just a dead print, period. That's never gonna work. All right, How you doing? That's, that's good. All right, so that's round two. Now we have to do a round three. Mm. And again, what we're looking for is we want, we're looking for less adjustments. We want, every time we do this, we want there to be less turns of the screw. If, if there are less turns, then we're heading in the right direction. If they're not, then again, look at bent bed or look at, uh, at miscalibrated steppers.